Hi guys, this is Lee Brandt. Um, don't mind the stuff back there. I just came back from a, a trip. Um, doing a little bit of a response to uh, Michael Tobin's video on the Pocket 6K Pro versus the Alexa 35. Um, if you haven't gone and checked out his videos or his channel, go ahead and go over there and subscribe. He's a pretty cool guy and seems to, and he does put some pretty cool stuff on uh, different gear and whatnot. But this particular video, he compared both of those cameras on a, under a Rec 709 color space. And the Pocket 6K, the Black, Black, Black Magic just that hasn't done a good job with their LUTs and their, and their Rec 709 stuff. While Ari and Red do fantastic. So that's why when he was comparing the two cameras for the Pocket 6K, it was just, it didn't look right. You didn't get the subtleties of the colors. You didn't get um, much dynamic range and the highlights. And I'm always uh, contending that, hey, when you grade the Pocket 6K's footage under color management slash wide gamut, you get more than 16 stops of dynamic range and you get a lot more color to play with. So I'm going to show you that and then uh, we'll see what happens. Hey guys, I'm here in DaVinci Resolve. I've got some uh, a shot, a scene that I shot here. It's high dynamic range, <clears throat> like you see the uh, the window up here. So let me make this a little bit bigger. The window up here was at F90. So then I opened my iris until I made um, middle gray was F.4, which is somewhere around the top of my my mom's hair. So that's nine stops above middle gray. And then there's other parts of the scene that were really, really dark, like F1. And so it's just a really high dynamic range type of scene that would be perfect to, to do an example. So uh, what I'm gonna do first is uh, I've already applied a um, Rec 709 color space to this. Uh, as you can see, uh, let's go to here. Here's the zones graph. And you can see right there that it's you're very limited in dynamic range. You're also very limited in color space. But right here, this zones graph is able to, to register up to 16 stops. And <clears throat> with, but you're not going to get, I think with Rec 709, you're only getting like five or six stops of dynamic range. So let's try to color grade this real quick. I mean, there's other ways of getting Rec 709 uh, color space, but um, they're all gonna be the same result. Um, I captured this at eight, uh, ISO 800 because it's a high dynamic range scenario with lots of sunlight coming from the windows and dark interiors. Um, so uh, you're getting some of of the highlights back, but it's somewhat limited because again, you're not getting everything that you could possibly get with um, with Rec 709. Uh, let's go back here and try to grade this with your primary wheels. So uh, if I'm trying to, okay, so if, you know, if I want to bring back some of the highlights back, so I'm going to uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, I'm trying to be, bring back my highlights down. You're just, you're not getting hardly any back. I mean, it's just ugly to try to bring that information back. Um, so the best thing is to lower your exposure. But the problem is, is that because you're, you're limited in dynamic range with this color space that you're not going to bring you. You're now sacrificing all your shadows. And if I try to bring just back your shadows, it just looks ugly. Look how bad that looks. So you just try to do the best you can somewhere around there. Um, if I try to do the other trick, which is that you bring down. Okay, so uh, to try to get the highlights back, you go from 800 to ISO 100 and post. You bring your highlights back, but you're not going to. The problem with this scenario is that you're still limited 
Therefore, if you're trying to recover your shadows, I mean, it's just ugly. You're not going to get it no matter what you do. It ain't going to happen, even if you do it through your global uh, exposure wheel. It's just not happening. So we're going to reset this node and we're going to go back to square one. Um, we're going to do this now the right way, which is, you know, if you want lots, uh, tons more of dynamic range, if you really want mo more than that range or you want much better color fidelity and just re your rendition is going to be much better with um, wide gamut. So the first thing you need to do is to go to color management. You first, once again, you hit the, at the bottom right, you hit the uh, project settings wheel. This is going to come up, go to down for, uh, to the color management tab in the color science, change it from DaVinci YRGB to color managed, then uncheck the automatic color management. And then in your color, color processing mode, you need to scroll down until you find HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. Select it. Output, output color space, leave it at Rec. 709 2.4. And then you save. And you are going to see immediately a change. Um, now, if, if I wanted to color grade here with my primary wheels, it's still all very ugly. It like it, that's not good at all. Why? Because you need to when you when you have wide gamut intermediate with uh, color management, primary primary wheels do not get the benefit of HDR. So you need to um, color grade with your HDR wheels. So let's reset that. Go to HDR, and now you can see. Um, in fact, if I do this. Now you're getting all 16 stops right here in the zones graph. That's how much latitude you're going to have. So if we go actual back to the actual wheels, and I'm now trying to go up, and you can completely see the difference. It's night and day. Like, it looks quite amazing. <clears throat> I mean, think about the fact that there's so much dynamic range that you have to play with here. Um, and it, I mean, this is a very stressful scenario for your, <clears throat> for your, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, <clears throat> I got a little bit of a cough going on, but I've, and this is a scenario that's very, very difficult for your sensor with, and which is the best way to test how much your camera can do. So let's, for example, let's, I'm gonna go up to about 130 on the global. And then I'm going to go to my shadows and uh, I'm going to adjust a little bit of how much it's going to change. I'm happy with that. I'm going to bring up the shadows. Now, I could go really high, but I'm, I'm just going to, I mean, look at, I mean, that's pushing everything, but I'm going to, I'm going to leave it about right there. Yeah, right there. Um, and then I'm going to work a little bit on my uh, my highlights, just to bring it back a little bit. Um, so let's see. That's a little bit. Let me select a little bit differently. Looks about right. <clears throat> then I'm going to go to the highlights. I'm going to it's about right. And then my specular, I'm going to leave them just about right there. So um, you are bringing everything back. Um, let me let me do a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Let's go to thirty five on both. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm a little bit under the clipping point. So let's go up with this. Let's go down with this. Yeah. So as you can tell now, 
everything is back. All the information now here. Um, in fact, maybe I, I think it needs to be a little bit brighter so it seems a little more realistic. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then let's set this up. Uh, once more, I'm going to go back to my. So that looks great. That looks absolutely amazing. It's a lot of dynamic range. Your colors are much better handled. Uh, there's a little bit of noise because it's ISO 800, but not much, not as much as you can. I mean, if I'm actually pushing in, you can see there's not a lot, but there is a little bit. So what we're going to do is real quick, we're going to go to the, uh, um, I'm going to eliminate the noise <clears throat> by first I'm going to go to frames, going to put it three. I only like to do light denoise because um, I, I don't think you should, you shouldn't really be doing too much denoising. Uh, and everybody has their own way of doing it. This is the way I like to do it. But as you can see, it's pretty clean. Uh, if you have a problem with the softness that uh, doing noise reduction gives you, then uh, an easy way to fix that is to come to the uh, blur, uh, what is it called, the, uh, the blur tap, and then go from 50 to about 47. Don't go more than 47. Uh, let's see. There you go, 47. And now it's all the sharpness is back. Uh, this was before. You see there was noise. And now there's no noise whatsoever. It's a clean image. The detail is like the colors are just rich. Um, and that's what this uh, method gives you as opposed to using the other method. So if you really wanna test how much dynamic range you can get with this camera, think about the fact that this, this scene, this footage that I shot, has over 16 stops of dynamic range and I'm getting all of it back. That's insane. Um, there is nothing that's clipping of the highlights even though it's nine stops above middle gray. So it's pretty cool. 